Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today comes from Matthew chapter 9. Jesus went throughout all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and harmless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly that the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you will have to forgive me on this one. I know it's a little bit um, way in the weeds, as it were. Uh, but in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, there is a German philosopher, thinker, theologian that is the whipping boy of theologians in the Missouri Synod. We, we don't like him. And I could go into his teachings, but it's actually way more complicated. And I can already feel you getting bored with the situation already. I will say this, though to maybe help you is uh, Dr. Schleiermacher, who was a German uh, 150 years ago, his thinking has so changed the world that all the problems in the modern world that you think, oh my gosh, what's going on here, can go back to his teachings. Now, I, again, I'm not gonna go into the depths of all that, it's way too much here. Uh, but I will say this, for all that intelligence, for all as smart as he was and how he has actually changed the world for better or for worse, I guess it's your point of view. Uh, he was asked at the end of his life, who are you? And he said, I wish I knew. That doesn't sound good to me. Does it sound good to you? Do you know who you are? Jesus today is offering you a great vocation in fact, working for Jesus. A harvester, as it were. So when you ask, who are you? You have an answer. I'm a Christian. And, and what is that? I follow Jesus. And I tell others good news. That's who we are. That's who you are. You might have heard this gem from pastors. It comes usually out of the evangelical movement, but I've heard it all over the place. Or in a seminar, or in a book, or on the television. It goes something like this, and I'm gonna kinda of cut through the fluff and go straight to what they're basically saying. Their teaching is something like this. If you don't witness Jesus, that might be the only person ever to come, back, come in contact with you, with a godly person. And if you don't witness to them, they might go to hell. Oh, what a burden to put on somebody. But there are the implications that I'm at fault for someone's eternal damnation. I, I can't live with that. I'm not capable of that. Can you? Do you want that on your shoulders? Is Jesus passively, aggressively trying to get you to grow his church? Does that sound like the way Jesus works even? Or the other side of that coin could be something like this. You know, I have great faith. My Lord loves me very much and I know I'm saved in every way. So job's over, I get to enjoy it. Oh, by the way, telling others about Jesus, well, I pay a pastor to do that. Theologically, you're asking God, you're telling God that you would like to spend the rest of your life sitting on a beach, drinking pina coladas and doing nothing. Now, I understand that all of you have a nice vacation and probably like some beach time. I get that. But every day for the rest of your life? A few years back, my family and I were on Bald Head Island, South Carolina. And after we did all the traveling to get down there, which I kind of enjoyed, getting on the boat, enjoyed, getting into the house, enjoyed, seeing all that's going around, enjoyed. And the next day, it was beach day for everybody. It was just, that's what it was. Oh, oh, good, 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 good. Four hours into it, I'm like, I don't want to be on this beach anymore. I am bored out of my gourd. The reality is this, that God has made us to be his workmanship, to do beautiful and wonderful things. Everything from being a father and a mother to uh, whatever vocations you have in your life, 
to being a child, to being a person in the community, that life is doing in a lot of ways. And Jesus will never, ever put another person's salvation in your hands. He's just not going to do that. Jesus is not asking you to do a job that is so terribly crushing that you're afraid. Who knows? You actually might like the work of a harvester in the end. We'll get there. Our text today might help. Jesus is going around and proclaiming the gospel. You know, saved by grace apart from works. And Jesus is saying this with authority. He sounds different than everyone else. He's unwavering in this. And with power too. I mean, he is healing after all. Because people have such trouble with grace, Jesus has to be unwavering with this. Jesus' church needs to be unwavering with this. Jesus' pastors need to be unwavering with this. You need to be unwavering with this. The pastor tells me a story once where a person in his congregation came up to him and said, I know heaven exists and I'm going there. Good. I assume you all know the same thing. I don't think that's shocking. And they go, and I know it because you, the way you say it. And he goes, no, no, no. The Bible says it. It's clearly the scriptures. It's the word of God. It's the words of Jesus. And he goes, no, you speak in such certainty, such a certain of it, that there's no way it can't not exist. That's how we Christians talk. That's how the harvesters talk. It's how you talk. Jesus talks very much this way. Jesus gives joy and has joy in proclaiming grace. I mean, that's all the difference. We've been saved by the blood of Christ and by his empty tomb. And now we have joy to tell others. I guess you're free not to tell others. So be it. You can try to not use the words. You could try not to act. And you can try not to be present. But I, in my 48 years in this world, and as a Christian, as a pastor for 20 of those years, and around you all this, with all, around all of you, I can say this. I have never seen a Christian able to do that. There was a little girl that went out shopping with her mom. Father's Day is coming up. You know that, and then you've probably done this. You take the, your kids out to the shopping. They pick out something. They let them pick out anything for dad. And of course, it's probably not the thing dad really wants, but it doesn't even matter because the little girl, she picks out, the daughter picks it out, and it's so special, and mom buys it. And they go, uh, now listen, you can't tell dad about this until Father's Day. It's a present. It's a gift. It's a surprise. And the little girl looks at mom and goes, yeah, I, I know. I know very much. And the dad comes home from work, and mom's in the kitchen or wherever she's at. And the little girl, you can just see like a, an explosion about ready to happen. She, it's in there, and she has to tell him. She doesn't want to, and you can watch it. And then finally, the little girl will say something. Daddy, I have a secret for you, but you can't tell mom. All right? He goes, we bought for you today a Lego ship in the bottle, and on Father's Day, you're going to open it, and we're going to build it together. It's going to be the greatest thing on earth, Dad, but don't tell Mom it's a secret. <laughs> you couldn't have stopped her even if you tried, could you have? Brothers and sisters in Christ, we live that in a daily way. We are the harvesters in the kingdom of God. We have to tell. It is just who we are. It's too good of news to hold to ourselves. It's life affirming, not only for others, but even for ourselves. It's an identity now. It is our great vocation. And Jesus has given us good works to do, and we do them. And they are not hardships in any way. Not really hardships. And you do it every day. Maybe I'm here just telling you this, reminding you this, and offering you that you can find joy in this too. It is good work after all. Jesus has compared us to harvesters, people who go out into the fields. And I have spent 15 years of ministry working with farmers. And so if you have not, I will tell you this. When the crop is finally ready to be harvested, there's electric in the air in the community. The combines roar. 
The streets are full of trucks full of grain. The lights are on. They are going 18, 19 hours a day. They will fill up those grain bin carts to take to the grain bin. And the, a lot of times the elevators close at midnight. And then at 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. they open and there's already a line of trucks there. The combines are hitting down the, row, the rows, the bins are full, and it's a lot of work. 18, 19, 20 days, eating in the field, going constantly. But I'm gonna get you, let you into a little secret. They love it. They love every bit of it. They enjoy it, it's the highlight of their year. They can't have enough of it. They like the work of harvesting. I've seen milkmen who just enjoy creating and selling milk. I've seen men who have chickens to bring eggs to market every day, and they still have great joy. It's the joy of finding the harvest, as it were, bringing cattle to sale. It's their vocation, after all, to be a harvester in the physical sense, but the joy of it overwhelms them. It's not their job. It's their vocation. And you can talk to any farmer, they can give you a long list of what's the terrible things about it, and there is. But when you start talking about harvest, you'll see their eyes sparkle. We are harvesters too, with that great joy that their Lord gives us to tell the good news. The field is full. The work is there of grace and joy. It's not your job, it is your vocation. Go. Tell the good news. One more final note here, final of it all, is this, and I want to remind you all this. The vocation of harvester is not a church worker's vocation. It is all Christians' vocations. To be fulfilled, to be enjoyed, to be gospel-centered, and simple. I'm a simple man. So if you're wondering how to do this, simply tell people how good Jesus really is. How good he has been to you. He has forgiven you all your sins and he has given this as a free gift. How can you hold it back? You cannot. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds on Christ Jesus. Amen.